in a shocking twist of events, I took my hair down from the last video. It was falling out, it was not an attempt to fool you guys into thinking that I had made some effort to change up my look. But anyway, hi. And in today's video, I want to talk about if you should share your work online on a site like Wattpad. I'm going to use Wattpad as my example just because it's the one that I use the most and have used since the start. But, you know, I guess you could substitute it for something like Radish, I think that's what it's called, or Archive of Our Own if it's more fanfiction. Or I'm sure there's a bunch of other platforms like this that I'm not even aware of. But, like I said, I'm going to use Wattpad as my example. As a bit of background for those of you who don't know, I found Wattpad back in 2010. A friend told me about a book she was reading on there and I loved the sound of this book so much. I went home the same day and started reading it and it wasn't long before I started posting my own stuff on there. The kissing booth actually started out on Wattpad as well in case you were unaware of that and you can go link in the description if you want to go and buy the kissing booth right now or the sequel go in the distance and read that before the movie comes out but what attracted me to Wattpad most was that it was this online community of other writers mostly young people and it felt really positive and really welcoming and I didn't have anything like that in my real life like I, I knew like one other kid at school who was interested in writing and it was always something that I felt weird about and never told anyone about. I didn't even tell my parents I was posting on Wattpad and writing stories and until months later and I've been writing stories on my laptop in my bedroom since I was like 11. And more recently of course I started uploading a new book called Lockdown on London Lane. Link in the description if you want to go and check that out. I upload it onto Wattpad and it's a collection of short stories centering around different 20 somethings in the same apartment block on lockdown which was actually a really fun project to work on and I'll probably talk more about that in a different video. But for now I want to focus on whether or not you should share your work and this is always something I've advocated for in any of my blog posts because there is just so much to be said for sharing your work and I've got a few different points on why exactly so bear with me on this. The first one is the anonymity so like I said I always felt weird in real life because I liked writing and I didn't really know anyone else who did but on Wattpad I could be as anonymous as I wanted to. I think my original picture was I'd say I think I, I know full well what my original profile picture was. It was an orange background with a silhouette of Bugs Bunny and my username was Recalls which was a nickname some of my friends had given to me in school but people on the site didn't know anything about me. I went by Recalls, I had this Bugs Bunny avatar as my profile picture. I don't think I even said I was from the UK, I didn't say how old I was. People had no idea who I was and all they had to go on were the stories I was posting. And one of the things I hated most about, and still do, about people in real life who I know reading my books is that they can give me feedback and I will always feel like they're just being nice because they're my friends or they're my family. But on a platform like Wattpad, I could post anything. I could post the books I was writing, like The Kissing Booth, and if people said they liked them, I believed them, because like, why would they lie about that? If they didn't like it, they just didn't say anything. They just went away and didn't comment. But if they were commenting that they liked it and they were excited for the next chapter, well, yeah, why, why would they lie about that, you know? It meant they were actually invested in the story. So that was like a huge deal for me and it really helped give me a sense of community which is one of the other benefits of course of sharing your work online you know because I would be responding to people in the comments or over messages and my readers felt a connection with me and I felt a connection with them and like I said that wasn't something I got in real life so this was like magical and also just seeing anyone read my book and tell me they liked it and were excited for the next part like that was massive I was 15! People liked what I was doing! And that was a huge motivator and a huge confidence boost. I mean, I still do think a lot of my writing is crap, but at the time I thought it was particularly crap. I also think that if you're someone who really struggles to see a project through to the end, that connection to your readers and the motivation that you're getting back from them by them enjoying your work is so important because if they're kind of holding you accountable to it, you feel like you feel a sense of responsibility to them to see it through and to give them the whole story, which can really help you overcome a bit of writer's block or just see it through and not give up on it. And like I said, it's the confidence boost as well. So maybe it's just that you're not finishing projects because you don't have the confidence to and you don't believe in yourself enough. But those people reading your book, they're gonna help you do that. Now the other thing that I really liked about it and still do is the user feedback. And yeah, I'm sure sometimes you will come across a couple mean comments, whatever the platform is, because there are people out there who just seem to thrive on negative energy. I implore you to do your best to ignore them. But sometimes you will get quite helpful, constructive criticism. And that can actually be quite nice to receive. I know it can be difficult to read through the comment the first time, but after like maybe four or five reads, you can desensitize yourself to it a little bit and pick out something useful that you could work on maybe if you want to. But again, you know, these are all strangers on the internet, so you don't have to listen to them if you don't want to. To. But the ones you probably will want to listen to are the ones who just say, 
how much they like it. So as I said, I have been posting this book called Lockdown on London Lane recently, link in the description to go read it, and I forgot what a rush it was to upload something on Wattpad and just see the comments come pouring in. So when I originally announced that I was going to do this book, I said I hope it's going to be a bit of romance, a bit of friendship, different relationship dynamics, and I hope it's going to be a bit funny. Because, you know, people have told me before my writing was funny, I didn't know that I could write humour until people commented on the kissing booth on Wattpad telling me it was funny and I was like, oh shit, really? Okay, cool. Which was especially nice to hear at the time because all my friends told me that I was really boring and I told boring stories, so... But anyway, I said I hope Lockdown on London Lane would be funny. And then one of the things Wattpad does is these inline comments, so you can comment on a specific portion of the text. And just to be like really arrogant right now, I freaking love when people comment the laughing face emojis and I go and see which bit exactly they find funny. And I get really excited, especially when it's a line that I hoped was gonna be funny. And that was amazing to see as, a, as the writer, because you know, with my published books, they kind of go out into the world and for the most part that's it. So that kind of instant feedback for me has been something that's been really exciting and really refreshing and it makes me remember when I was first uploading just what a rush it gave me and that it actually made me believe in myself for the first time ever. You know because I'd always thought it would be nice maybe to one day be a writer or maybe have something published but I had zero faith in myself, did not think that was ever going to happen. And yet here I am, eight books, two movies later, all by age 25, but it's not too shabby if I do say so myself. Um, I do want to touch on one of the concerns that I see most from people when I suggest publishing online to whatever platform, and that's copyright. At least for the sites I'm aware of, like AO3, Wattpad, you retain the copyright, and there should be guidelines on the websites as to what exactly that means for the platform and how it works. And the other concern I've seen from people is that they're worried it will hurt their chances of being published, and I'm sure there are people who have posted something online and tried to get it published and the feedback has been no because it's out there for free. But, you know, like I said, I didn't do too badly from it. Anna Todd, another really great example. There are plenty of writers who started out online. Look at Fifty Shades of Grey. I mean that was published online as fan fiction and if anything I think it kind of helps to some degree because you've proven that you've got this audience there and that people are appreciating your work and that they enjoy it and that maybe you even have this existing fan base of dedicated readers. I mean I was found on Wattpad by an editor who saw how popular my book was and wanted to publish it and I know that there are several other writers from Wattpad who have gone on to get publishing deals and I swear they're not paying me to make this video, it's just a platform I like using. So no, I don't think that sharing your work online holds you back from dreams of getting published at all. You may not even go on to publish the thing you post online, but you will sure learn a lot from that experience. And just to wrap up this video now, I want to share three of my tips for if you are going to post your book online. The first one is to share regular updates. So this is something that I learned very quickly when I was first posting on Wattpad. I made sure to do when I was uploading Lockdown on London Lane, particularly to tell your readers at the end of each upload when they can expect the next one. If you're going to be on holiday for the next two weeks and you can't upload, that is fine, but tell your readers that so they know. And otherwise try to be quite consistent, whether it's, you know, I'll upload every Monday and Thursday, or like with Lockdown on London Lane, I said there'll be new chapters every Tuesday, so people knew what to expect. And in between those updates, just try and stay on the platform a little bit and connect to some of your readers, respond to a couple of comments, just try and be present if you can. The second thing I want to say is to work on your cover and your blurb. So for instance, there are platforms like AO3 where you can't have a cover for your work, and um, you could add an image in, but that's not one of the first things people see. What they do see, however, is the blurb, and same on Wattpad, and that is what you need to hook your readers, and if you can add a cover, you damn well should, whether it's one that you make in Canva, which I 100% recommend. That is where I made the one for Lockdown on London Lane, link in the description, and it's really easy to use and it's free, but you want to make the most of the blurb, of the cover, and story tags, so for instance on AO3, you want your ship tags and you want to say it's fluffy, it's angst, it's a fairy tale AU, whatever. Use the tags and maybe explore a couple of similar books in that genre and see what tags they're using to see how you can promote your book. If you're struggling to come up with a good blurb, I would recommend again looking at similar books in the genre, whether that's published books or on the platform, and just taking a look at how they've done it. But the point of it all is to really hook your readers in before they've even opened your story to read it. And my third point is to connect with your readers. So message them to tell them there's a new upload, reply to their comments, tell them thank you, that you're glad they enjoy it. If they have questions about the story or your writing or something like that, try and respond to them where you can. I've always found that building that sense of community really helps you personally and obviously it can't hurt to help strengthen your readership. So I hope this video has been helpful and I hope it's answered some of your questions if you're wondering whether or not to post one of your books 
online. If you do, I would love to hear how it goes and I'd be really interested to hear your experiences of posting books online. So please let me know in the comments down below or you can head over to Twitter where you find me at Recals and let me know on there or find me on Instagram at author Beth Recals. I'd also really like to hear if there are other things you want me to talk about in terms of writing advice and my writing journey. So again, please let me know and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.